Yeah, it, I don't know if it came out on the broadcast, but I communicated with them before the game, so everyone would be understandable that we had three pre-planned subbed. Um, Courtney Vine, um, Ford and Meeks was all pre-planned subbed in cooperation with Triple M team. They had between 45 to 60 minutes. We evaluated Vine in, in half time. She did a strength test. She, lo she lost 15% of strength in, in her hammy and couldn't, couldn't continue, unfortunately, because she had a really good first half. So that's why. Um, just on Chris, uh, Gori, she was limping out there. Can you give us an update on, on what's going on there? No, I, ha I don't know myself. Sorry, I haven't been able to talk to neither her or the Triple Sam team yet. Sorry. Tony, can I, the first half felt like everything you said you wanted your team to play like, and then the second half fell away. It kind of felt like one step forward, two back. Can you maybe explain why you why that was the case, I guess? Well, first of all, I think you summarized the game perfectly. That's how I felt as well. Obviously, I want to dissect it and analyze it, but Caitlin and I was talking about it on, on the way here. It's, it's frustrating because we felt those, those four to five minutes was maybe the first time in a very long time when we packaged a performance consistently in four to five minutes in a row. We've seen patches before, as I've spoken about, five minutes here, seven minutes there, but this was a four to five minute complete performance where we're actually dominating Canada, Olympic champions, and we had six starters from the Olympics not even available going into the game. Um, and that felt so good. And then in the halftime, we said, we know exactly what's going to happen. Canada has nothing to lose. They're going to go out and press the shit out of us. We need to be ready for it. We need to play faster. Sorry for the language. <laughs> Apologize. That's right. It's this way. Yeah. It's all right. Yeah, it's fine in this country. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, but I don't think we were really ready. I, I do think they caught us a bit there. We, we, played sl we didn't match their speed of press with our speed of play. Um, and I said that before, I want to play, I want us to play, we have the ability to play, but we didn't play fast enough, so we started to get dispossessed more often. Um, and then that 1-1 one, one goal, um, and I, I don't want to be the one that sits here and, and complain about stuff, but I, I do want to look at some of those situations and see if there were some, some referee calls that could have been differently, a couple of sides and handballs that I want to look into, and, and sometimes that happens in game, but I, but I want to look at that. Particularly the second goal as well, that was probably the one that concerned me the most, I guess. Yes. We're going to take a couple of questions for Caitlin Ford so she can go and get changed. So has anybody got questions for Caitlin? Thanks, Tracy. Um, Caitlin, can you just give us your uh, perspective of what it was like being out there in the middle after what we've just heard from um, Tony? But also, um, from your own point of view, Tony said uh, ahead of these two matches that there were 11 training runs and 11 games. So now there's nine. We can probably calculate all of this in minutes. How do you see those minutes unfolding between now and the World Cup? Yeah, I mean, I think Tony said it right with the first half. Um, how it looked is how it felt for us as well. We felt like we're dominating. We felt like we felt like us again. We felt like we're playing well and um, a bit unlucky not to score a couple more. And um, yeah, we don't have that much time together um, leading into the World Cup. So that's why these moments like that 45 is really important that we build on that and yeah, take that momentum into the next game and um, learn from obviously the second 45 as well. Any more questions for Caitlin? Misha. Um, <coughs> yesterday Tony spoke about that there was a belief internally. Can you describe to us what, what it's like for a player inside the camp at the moment? Yeah, I mean, I think anyone that puts on this green and gold jersey, not only in football, but any sport in this country, it's a, a privilege and we give everything every time we go out there and... Um, yeah, it's disappointing to have some losses, but the bigger picture is what we're working towards. And yeah, it's it's easy to forget about that when you know we don't get the result we want. So we're just trying to stay positive and obviously work towards what we're building to. Amanda, um, Caitlin, just when you came off, like how are you? Have you pulled up? Are you okay? Yeah, I mean, I just obviously come back from a injury that I've previously had, so. I didn't really probably get the load that I would have liked to going into the game. So, yeah, hopefully, I think it's just a bit of cramp. And, um, yeah, we just wanted to be safe and manage it well. Matt? Hey, Caitlin, so many of you are now back to Europe and England and the Women's Super League is on the horizon. How important is, is that competition? Obviously, it's going to take on a new meaning for a lot of you now with, with preparation for the World Cup now so important and games and match minutes and whatnot. Yeah, of course. I mean, that's the place that we spend most of our time and... Although we're in our club um, shirt, the picture is leading towards the World Cup and we're just going to try and obviously get better there, fitter, um, and then come back in um, to national team camp and hopefully, you know, bring our momentum from our clubs into um, national team. And, yeah, I think, I mean, 
not making any excuses, but we all just have finished pre-season and this is our first proper test. So, yeah, I think it's positive if you look at it that way and obviously mid-season hopefully we'll be flying. Two more questions for Caitlin and we'll let it go, Jay. Um, Caitlin, you looked really, really good out on that left tonight in terms of just created a couple of really great chances. And I feel like there's sort of, sometimes when we talk about the Matildas, there's, there's a, a conversation about potentially a reliance on Sam Kerr at times. And I feel like that almost wasn't the case tonight more often than not. How is your sort of connection with Sam at the moment in terms of in that final third, how are you guys feeling as an attack and how are you clicking? Obviously, you've played together for so long, but right now, how are you feeling as a sort of a connection up front? Yeah, I mean, Sam and I love coming into camp because that's the time we get to play together. And yeah, we've been playing together since we are 15. So we know each other very well. And obviously, um, it's hard sometimes when, I mean, she's normally touch wood okay, but I'm the one out with injuries and um, miss the moments to play with her. So yeah, we just try and take every opportunity we can um, when we do get out there. Final question for Kate? No? All right. Okay. We'll let you go. Cool. Thanks, Thanks guys. Thanks, Thanks Kevin. See you later. All right, Finn. Tony, you set up all these um, friendlies against high-ranked opposition, presumably to help the team improve. You got, uh, in my count, one win in 18 games against top 20 opponents. So where is the improvement? Well, um, I think if you look at a four to five minute today, I hope that we saw some improvement in terms of the fact that we can dominate a top team, not just compete with them. Um, I hope that can be looked upon as an improvement and also to be able to do that with six key players out, meaning I hope that we can see or you guys can see that maybe in a year and a half ago, if we played Canada with six key injuries, we wouldn't have been able to dominate them like we did in 45. At least that's how I look at it. I don't want to sit here and protect myself, but that, that's how I look at it. Uh, that's an improvement, um, but we still have ways to go in terms of the, the World Cup, meaning we need to put 90 minutes solid performance together. Um, if you look at some individual players, which is also part of the improvement, is look at a Charlotte Grant. As a, I think it's a very good example. If, if Charlotte would not have gotten all the opportunities that she's gotten in, not in, in a national team, she's actually been on the bench a lot with club, uh, playing Spain, playing Portugal, being a captain in AFF, uh, playing games there, like all those games that she got, I don't think that Charlotte would have performed as well as she's done in these two two double headers. I actually think Charlotte did a really, really good job, especially defensively against the world, a really good speedy left forward. And I think that's also an improvement of fringe players and depth in the roster. Uh, which I've said from day one that a part of the job description that I got from the Federation was to learn how to beat the best team, but also build depth in, in the roster. Um, hopefully, like Caitlin said, if all the players are available and we're in form, maybe we can see a complete performance for 90 minutes. Do you think 45 minutes, though, is enough at this point? We're very close to the World Cup, as you said the other day, like 10, 9 training sessions maybe now. You're asking people to keep the faith in the team and what you're doing on the basis of... 45 minutes. I am, and it might feel unfair to ask for that. And I understand. Actually, it's fair questions. It really is. And I, I can see that from the outside, how it may look. Uh, but hopefully with some perspective that being able to do that four to five minutes with pre-planned sub players that have a lot of knocks and not really being able to physically play the way we wanted to play. Maybe what I could have done if I want to be more cynical is to adjust to that physical uh, load that we had and say, hey, let's protect this lead, practice game management, maybe do what we did in Olympics, go back to the three back, five back, and maybe transition in the second half. But at the same time, that's not who we're about. And if this would have been a World Cup and just play for assault, maybe we would have gambled with Caitlin, gambled with Wine, but in the long run, we need to protect the health of the players. And well, we don't want them injured. They need to go back and play with clubs. And I'm not blaming it on that, but it's a part of it. Next question, George. Can I just come back similar train of thought to Vince? Like I think since the Olympics, barring two games to start the Asian Cup, you've just, I don't think you've kept a clean sheet in that time. You'd have to go back to the US game, I think. You've tended to rely on the same defence. I know Calvin Hill is not here, Kennedy's not here today. Can you maybe give an insight where you actually feel they're improving? Because the, it's particularly that second goal, they just cut straight through you. It was offside, though, in my opinion, but we can look at that afterwards. Um, I. I don't agree that we looked at the same same back line because the problem is we haven't been able to play the back line two games in a row. Uh, we have that's the line we had least consistent in for for a year, 
Uh, in the US camp, we had both Alana and Pokes non available. Um, Ellie's been un unavailable now for a long time. So that's actually the line where I've had least consistency. I don't know how many backs we've looked at, but in center back position, I think it's been between six and eight different center backs. Um, so I would love it to be a camp where we could have come in and get some consistency, some cohesion, and, and get the relationships done. Because when we have that back four together, I think we've been solid and, and, and good. The good thing, though, now is that we, we get even more minutes on the players that had been competing and, and kind of had to stand behind Ellie, like a Charlotte Grant or a Courtney Nevin or an Ivor Luik, for example. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Oh, yep, sorry. <laughs> anyway. Um, so looking forward, obviously, Sweden up next. I mean, you, you spoke yesterday about sort of that potentially, as you put it up, being overambitious in terms of um, the schedule and the fixtures. Are, um, and, I mean, let's be honest, like, I mean, Australia really wants to see the Matildas win again. I mean, looking forward to that game. I mean, do you sort of wish, going back to those comments, do you, do you feel that more now after this series and looking forward to that game as we move closer and closer to the World Cup and we just haven't had a win for a long time? No, I don't, because I, I personally think that that might be false confidence, uh, and I'm not wired that way. Uh, I do think it could have been good, though, for the momentum and you know the belief in the team. For that sake, it could be good. But in terms of preparation, I'm not sure that would be the best thing. We do have a camp in October, though, before that Sweden game with, with two opposition as well. And I can't reveal now who we're playing, but what I can say is what we've done is we've also looked at unique type of opponent, not just top ranked. We want to play, if we can, different style from different uh, continents. That every, Everything from Sona player to Mark, and we don't, don't need to go into details now, but when you look at a World Cup draw, you have certain amount of percentage chance to get certain type of opponents and we looked at that so that we're prepped for every type of opponent come the World Cup. We've got time for three more questions, Sam. Tony, after the game, Sam Kerr was sort of stood off to the side, um, not talking to anybody, kind of staring off into the middle distance. Seems like she's really starting to wear the weight of the Matilda's jersey and of the captaincy and these performances and her not performing particularly as well as she does for Chelsea, seems to be weighing on her. Is that something that you've spoken to her about? Well, first of all, I think if, if you've seen Sam after losses, even in Clubland and other games, that is Sam. She's processed a lot of emotions off the game, so very often she actually steps aside, and everyone knows that's Lever B right now because there's a lot of emotions. She hates losing. So she's so angry. I was almost about to swear again, but she's really, really, really angry and upset after losses, so she needs to go aside. You know, you need to read when it's, she, you know, when it's okay to approach her again because she's a winner. Uh, so I think maybe you overread a little bit on it, but at the same time, I think you're onto something. And I think it's important that Sam doesn't carry all the burden for this team because it's not just about Sam, it's about the whole team. But I also know how much she loves this team, how much she cares. So she also needs to be let having that responsibility, if that makes sense. Not just take it off her, but also you know let her have that responsibility, but not take the blame herself. Because it's the team that lose out there, not just Sam Kerr. Did you have a follow-up? No. Uh, anybody else from this side? Tracy? Um, Tony, what have you learnt about this Australian team and the Australian public with the, the time you've had with them now? You know, you've got to know them all very well and how they are from us. Um, yeah. What have you learnt about that whole picture? Because we love winners yep. and when we're not winning, we do struggle with that. Yeah, which I actually like because I'm the same. Um, and we all want to be winners. And I, I think if we can have that hope and faith in this team that come World Cup, we, we will be winners. What I learned is that this team is ready to do whatever it takes to be prepared. Um, and they're working extremely hard to reach that. Um, and there's a belief in that process uh, from both the players uh, and also internally in, in the federation. But when, you, when you're losing too many games, maybe it can cut the confidence a bit which I think it could have been done for, for some of the players. I think external, like I said, when, when you see us losing, maybe there starts to be you know, lack of faith or lack of hope or lack of belief. I've said it before and I say it again, I think it's a difference between expectations and belief. And I say that from other experience from coaching both men's teams and women's teams and both club and, and country that um, it's a huge difference between expectations and, and belief. And when, we, when I took over this team, I actually believed in it and I actually I think I said in a comment that I think this team in the future could become one of the best teams in the world. We're not there now. We need to be real. We're not the best team in the world right now. But we know when we play our best, we can beat the best team in the world in a one-off. 
especially if we have all the players available um, and we're firing, like similar to what we did in, in the Olympics. Um, so in that sense, I think, again, I love that we want to be winners, but if we can keep believing in the team, but also have perspective of what we can expect when. And I, I want to be clear, and I don't, don't look at a coach now saying, trying to protect themselves, hey, don't you expect we can beat Canada? It's not what I'm, what I'm saying. I say we need to have perspective of some of the things that we've, we've done in terms of what we can expect of this team and what we actually can believe this team can do. Final question to George. Tony, I just want to come back. You said you didn't want to, when you obviously got a lot at half time, you didn't want to conserve the lead. You kind of wanted to keep going forward. Given that could arguably be your starting 11 at a knockout game next year, I'm curious why you didn't put yourself in that scenario and try and do that to give Thornton and Percy that could be happening next year. I think it's a, a first of all, great question. I think there's a couple of reasons to that. One, it's all about momentum and timing in football and we coaches are paid to make a decision before we know if they're right or wrong. And afterwards, it's very easy to say, why didn't we do that? You know, we're paid to make those decisions pre-knowing what's right and wrong. Maybe if we would have parked the bus and we sit here in this press conference and we would have conceded two goals, I think maybe the question would have done differently. Like, why didn't you keep pressing? Why did you park the bus? It's, it's always easy to, to put those glasses on afterwards. Um, I think I didn't do it because I thought we had more in our tank to actually keep pressing for longer and play quicker than, than we actually did. Uh, and I didn't think the subs was going to influence us as much as, as it did. Um, but again, looking in the mirror and, and review what I could have done, maybe if I just was looking at doing it as a World Cup to, to win the game, maybe that's what I should have done. I need to look at the game, though, because that might not have been the reason. I need to look at the game first and see what were actually the reason to, to concede those, those goals. Okay, that concludes the press conference. Thanks, everyone, for attending, and thanks, Tony, for your time. Thank you.